Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Washington Garcia. Um, today, I'm going to present our paper, which was work that I did while a PhD student at University of Florida, alongside my advisor, Kevin Butler. So I'll get right into it for the sake of time. In this paper, we investigate power label attacks, which are the most constrained, yet in our opinion, the most realistic style of attack available to modern aerosol ML. We focus on the image domain and consider the scenario where an adversary has an image that they want to forcibly misclassify with a victim model. The adversary only gets the decisional feedback and doesn't enjoy the parameter information or the confidence values for respective classes. These hard label attacks started as a random walk on the decision boundary in 2017. Um, and it wasn't until 2019 that by casting as a zero of order optimization problem, it was possible to achieve a theoretically justified convergence guarantees on the very same hard label attacks. These style of attacks uh, usually try to minimize a surrogate function. So instead of trying to optimize the discrete step function, which is hard, uh, it's converted to a soft value distance function G of theta. And here theta is the direction where you're searching for the area serial sample. So the goal here is to find the optimal solution to G of theta where you're optimizing over theta. Over the next couple of years, there was a bit of an arms race to achieve the most core efficient hard label attack. And for brevity, I'll just spare you the details and say that every new iteration of this, these uh, new attacks effectively tried to subsample the search space on theta. Um, so this formed the impetus for our paper. Um, basically, we need to subsample the search space to achieve query efficiency. However, this reduces the search fidelity. So how is it possible that we can reduce or subsample the search space and still achieve a high fidelity adversarial sample? Our initial intuition was to consider the model manifold since it's known that standard confnets can actually encode data image, uh, image data sets into low dimensional latent representations. This brings us to the main research question of our paper, which is, what is the connection between subsampling and the error series knowledge in these hard label attacks? We, we began our investigation by considering a basic result in data processing called the data processing inequality or DPI. It states that if there are um, three random variables, um, say X, Y, and Z, and they form a Markov chain, then their mutual information has a relationship as you see on the screen. And so it states that the mutual information between X and Y will act as an upper bound on the mutual information between X and Z. Together with DPI and some core assumptions, we pour the foundation for our paper. First, we assume that the input data concentrates on a data manifold. And this is reasonable because we know that confidence can encode image, uh, image information into a low dimensional latent representation. Um, and so in place of X, we'll use M. Second, we assume that there is a distribution of input gradients with respect to some target label. Uh, this is going to be true regardless because we know that there's always going to be some direction we can traverse to achieve a target label that the adversary wants. So in place of Y, we'll use G. And lastly, we assume that um, there's a distribution of gradient estimates coming from the hard label attack. Uh, and so this is also true because we know that hard label attacks will try to traverse the search space to find that target label. And so instead of Z, we'll denote by G tilde. Now we'll assume that these three variables form the Markov chain, which is a big assumption, um, which I'll cover later. But we posit that if we can increase the mutual information between M and G, the manifold and the true gradients, this could act as an upper bound between, or act as an upper bound on the mutual information between manifold and gradient estimates G tilde. Um, this will be nice because we know that um, this can, if this is true, we could generate on manifold our serial examples. And these are actually known as generalization errors. So now what we're concerned is how do we increase this first term? Oh, 
Well, we know from prior work that empirically subsampling helps hard, um, hard label attacks achieve better query efficiency. So we'll model the mutual information between manifold and clean gradients as a function of the data dimension using known theoretical results from Schmidt and colleagues. So they had a nice uh, closed form solution that says that uh, adversarial robust models require more data as a function of the data dimensionality. And so they have a, a nice data model and a definition for a robust classifier that we borrow. And this is what we're going to use to derive a closed form solution for the mutual information between manifold and clean gradients. Um, there's a bit of derivation that I'm going to skip here for time, but um, with the joint and marginal distributions that we define in the paper, we then use the standard definition for mutual information and give a closed form, uh, derive a closed form solution for this manifold gradient mutual information. Uh, in our first set of experiments, we run Raman approximations on that closed form solution. And what we found is that uh, the rate of increase for mutual information is increasing slower than the increase in dimensionality. What this tells us is that at lower dimensions, there's actually a higher effective mutual information, which, which suggests that increasing this first term at low dimensions can actually act as a higher upper bound between manifold and the noise gradients. However, this is all true for the clean setting, but we're really interested on in the hard label setting or the noisy setting. We call this a uh, higher upper bound, the noisy manifold distance oracle or NMD oracle. But we want to show that this Markov chain assumption that we made earlier and was the foundation for this result could exist on real data. If it does, this could act as a mechanism for the adversary to uh, uh, find better on manifold adversarial examples. We start by designing two algorithms. And so the, the point of these algorithms is to probe whether a adversary can model the transition from manifold to noisy gradients only using the hard label queries. So what we do is we borrow a page from interpretability literature and we say uh, at each local step in the hard label attack, we're going to set, uh, use the hard label queries as points in a local neighborhood around that sample. And we'll use those that neighborhood to build a linear model of the decision boundary in that neighborhood. With that linear model, we can then query for feature importance values. And using those values, we can then rate the quality of that linear model using the R2 score. We repeat this process in a second algorithm. This time, um, this second algorithm will aggregate this first algorithm over each, each stage of the hard label attack. And so this will give us a quality score for each stage of the attack. Uh, and for simplicity, we just consider the initialization stage, which is the first call to algorithm one and uh, subsequent gradient estimate stages, which are, was, is the second call to algorithm one. This will give us a list of quality scores and this acts as the foundation for the next results you're going to see. And then what we're trying to answer with these, uh, with these two algorithms is, can the hard label adversary model the Markov chain sufficiently only using the hard label queries? And the short answer is yes. Um, what we see is that the hard label adversary in just the initialization stage can actually model a rough semantic, uh, semantic representation of that image. And so this is effectively finding the initial directions that will point towards the manifold for that specific image. Since hard label attacks are heavily dependent on the initialization stage, uh, you'll see that most of the semantic information is captured in the initialization stage. And then subsequent stages will more or less fine tune that initialized sample. And this is why you'll see uh, the entire image space being utilized. To test the second question, we developed this really simple upscaling, or you can think of it as a downscaling version of your standard hard label attacks. Um, this is generic enough to apply to any gradient estimate based attack. And basically, we'll have a 
dimension reduced version of <clears throat> data, we'll call it data prime. And then we'll bilinearly upscale that to the actual perturbation, which can then be applied to the original image. Using this very simple modification, we then test the second question. And what we found is that at lower dimensions, so when we have a lower dimension data prime, we can actually get a better or more refined version of that semantic representation. Effectively, we can find better initial directions that will point towards the manifold. And so as you can see here qualitatively, um, the lower version, lower dimension version of that attack will actually give you cleaner edges around that ship. We then quantify this by using the R2 scores that I mentioned earlier. And what we found is that uh, universally there was a, uh, the R2 scores, the qu quality of these linear models tended to be higher for the lower dimension. There is a natural trade-off here where uh, we showed that with, with the yellow arrows, you can get higher quality and you can actually get a lower distance to the manifold, which we quantify by the Frechet inception distance or FID and LPIPs. These tend to be lower, but since the concentration of aerosol samples uh, near, the, near the manifold is lower, this also results in a lower success rate. So this is a, a consistent trend we noticed. So knowing that, we consider for the final part of the paper, uh, what is the adaptive adversary? Or what's the worst case attack analysis? In, this, in these uh, new attacks, which we denote MC and uh, dynamic BILN, we're going to use algorithm two to learn the initial directions. And at each iteration uh, of the hard label attack, we're going to relearn those initial directions, those original semantic directions, and automatically upscale if we've dropped too low in quality. When we apply this style of attack, we actually found that we can uh, achieve a much lower FID score while actually balancing the success rate. So we can make the best of both worlds and increase the success rate and lower the FID score, which means we can find a higher concentration of on-manifold artificial examples than the state of the art, which would be Reyes. What we finally look at is um, we can achieve that lower FID and a lower LPIPs. And we know that these uh, generalization errors that we're finding are actually blind spots in adversarial training thanks to previous work. So then we investigate uh, the effect of uh, when we apply a strong radiant level attack, such as L infinity auto attack, which is considered a C of the art for adversarial training, and um, LPA and PPGD, which are perceptual based gradient level attacks. We can actually achieve a similar distance to the manifold as uh, PPGD and LPA while actually achieving a similar or lower success rate. All of this without actually requiring that gradient information. So this is actually a win for penetration testing of the opaque models that we might encounter in the wild. Um, so using this methodology, we can actually expose bad threat modeling and it gives us an option to find generalization errors, blind spots on opaque models. This also leads to a natural <clears throat> geometric interpretation. So we can find arterial samples that are concentrated near the manifold with higher, higher probability. And this is something I'd be willing to discuss in the poster session. And if you were asleep for the past 15 minutes, and uh, the TLDR of this talk is uh, dimension reduction exposes the blind spots in aerosol training. Uh, with that said, that's all the time I have for today. Uh, thanks.